Hey guys, this is Scott, and tonight I am brewing my black IPA. Uh, right now it's the fifth time I've done it. Uh, this is going to be the first time doing it with my all grain system, and it's going to be the first time I do uh, any sort of decoction mash. Uh, I'm targeting a triple decoction, going to go for it. It's a little bit ambitious, and it's already 6.30 at night, so maybe, uh, <clears throat> maybe I'll be up late, but um, I will try and document as much as I can, and hopefully... Uh, Stick with it all the way through till till one or two in the morning. Uh, right now, I'm heating up my <clears throat> uh, strike water really only to about 98 degrees because I'm going to go for uh, acid rest, and that'll be my first stop on the the triple decoction train, and we'll go from there. Um, little thing I'm using tonight. This is the second time I've used it. Is um, it's a bucket heater. I got it for Christmas, and um, uh, it's worked pretty well so far. Uh, I do this all indoors on my stove, and as you can see, I've got my pot on both burners. Both burners are on high, um, so I do that and and the bucket heater combined. And um, with the larger volumes in here, it, it, it works out pretty well. So I do recommend it. Um, for this beer, I did not make a, uh, a yeast starter. I usually make my yeast starter um, using the wort from this brew so later tonight I will put uh, I'll steal some of the wort at the end some of the cooled wort or even when it's hot maybe um, put it in my flask along with a jar of reclaimed yeast I use the the Denny's 50 the Denny's favorite 50 which is the Y yeast 1450 uh, I've used it for this beer each time and it's come out great so I love that yeast and uh, using a <clears throat> the 5.2 uh, pH stabilizer. I uh, already put it in there and that's it for now. I'll go over the ingredients. In a so here are my ingredients. Um, I've got 15 pounds of two row. I've got a pound and a half of crystal 80. One pound Carafa 3. Uh, I've got a pound of Belgian dark candy sugar. A half a pound of honey malt and a third of a pound of chocolate malt, which is a slight reduction from previous batches. Um, I bought both of these in one pound because it was the same price. Um, <clears throat> I've got my hops over here. I've got uh, two ounces of Columbus and an ounce of Chinook. I have four ounces of Cascade and two ounces of Amarillo. And then over here I have my reclaimed yeast, which is that, that light layer. Um, on the bottom you've got the hops, on the top you've got what basically is beer uh, and that little white layer is my yeast. Uh, I'm not great at um, washing or saving my yeast. You know, Everyone says I should have a clearer liquid on top but um, it's worked for me and since it came from the same beer I'm making now I see no no harm in, uh, in using it. I'm um, also going to use some Irish moss. Uh, I haven't moved on to anything else. I bought a big bag of it a while ago and still working through it. Um, I was not paying attention and my strike water got up above uh, 98, so I'm gonna stir that up, cool it down. Um, just a quick tour of my area here. This is my kitchen. I've got my, my tool tote over here. I've got my uh, refractometer. Um, all my cleaning supplies over here. Some mason jars uh, for another project. Some mesh bags and uh, hydrometer. And then uh, this is uh, my lauder ton, and then I've got my mash ton over here, false bottom, and uh, empty fermenter, yep, empty fermenter ready to be cleaned. That's about it. Uh, this is new for me. I had to buy a uh, rather large ladle. Um, you're supposed to use um, something a little bit larger than this. This is eight ounces, and I think every video I've seen, people are using a, a quart uh, ladle. It just makes the process for decoction a lot faster. I'm going to have to basically take four scoops with this for every uh, for every quart and you're supposed to take one quart for every pound of grain so as you can, see, you can kind of see um, I'm right at about 24 or no 20 yeah 20 20 pounds so that's gonna be 80 scoops that will take a while uh, I will not be showing that because it'll just take too long so I'm gonna get my water back down to temperature uh, I will move it into my mash ton and uh, come back when I'm doing that all right, so I got my water back down to about 100 degrees. I did a little more research on the acid rest, and I'm okay with a slightly higher temperature. 
So right now, transferring everything down into my mash tun, and I need, uh, let's see, it was 24 quarts, so about six gallons, which will be up to right about there. So once I do that, I uh, will start mashing in or doughing in my uh, my grains. Okay, so uh, I don't have a tripod, but this uh, this shot will have to do for now. So I'm going to now dough in my grain. I'm going to start with the 15 pounds of two row. I'll probably do about two thirds of this bag and then uh, mix it up and then do the rest. Let's see, I'm getting there. Yeah, that's about right. <clears throat> so quick shot inside. That's the best smell. I don't care what anybody says. That smell and the smell when it's been sitting in your car, those are good. And my spoon. Yeah, plenty of room. I'm still getting used to using this system. Uh, I got this system for Christmas. And uh, I've only used it once. Uh, I used it once to make uh, an IPA <clears throat> using malt that I made myself, which was uh, a bit of a pain because the efficiency I got was pretty terrible. But I still think I think the efficiency would have been worse if I was still doing uh, brew in a bag. So, a uh, pound of carafa three. pound of chocolate malt, so I'm gonna use about a third of this bag. I'm, I'm not one for scales. It's uh, I don't know. I don't see a big difference really. I don't, I don't buy my grain in, in bulk, so or at least I don't yet. And then some honey malt. This is uh, half a pound, so I'll use half of this bag. about there. So, there you go. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Just stir it in. And that'll be the start of my alpha rest. So, uh, let's see. I think I stay, stay at this temperature for about, I think it's a half hour. It's really up to me. I mean, it's up to you, you know, how long you actually do it for. It really depends on um, the grain and how patient you want to be. I think you can do it. I mean, you can do it for as long as you want, but I think it's recommended to do it for about 20 minutes, 20 to 40 minutes. So put the cap on that, keep stirring, and then we'll start a decoction. So the, uh, the first portion of the alpha rest is done. It was uh, 20 minutes long. And what's going to happen now is I'm going to scoop uh, 20 quarts of the thickest part of the mash from here into my pot and then boil that portion of it. And then once it's boiled for about 15 to 20 minutes, I'm going to take that and add it back into uh, the liquid that's left over here to raise it up to my next temperature, which I'll have to check about it. I don't remember exactly what it is. Um, 
then gets the protein rest. So I think that's like 120. But um, I'll just show you the first couple scoops. Um, there's going to be 80 of them, so it's going to take a while. But basically I'm going to try and drain, drain off the wort. And I'll count that as maybe one and a half, we'll see. So I still get some liquid. Obviously you want to get enough liquid to cover up, uh, well almost cover up the grain. Um, or at least that's what I've seen in the videos at this point. Come back in a little bit when I'm near the end.